This is Real Talk. My name is Kevin DeSerpa, and today's topic is soccer culture. In today's episode, I'll be touching on soccer culture from my experience in all different types of countries. I'm from Canada, and my background is Portuguese. My parents uh, are Portuguese. My grandparents immigrated to Canada when my parents were young kids. Um, so my background and my blood is Portuguese, but I'm Canadian. I was born and raised in Canada. I grew up playing soccer in Canada from 4 to 15. And I'm going to tell you a little bit of my experience uh, going through the Canadian soccer ranks. Soccer in Canada, uh, when I was young, and even now, um, there's a, an association that leads soccer in Canada, like every other country in the world. And um, back in the day, their philosophy was minor soccer clubs and trying to offer soccer for, for kids and parents for, for, for participation. Um, and that's what I was put into and that's what I was raised on was playing soccer for fun and participating and, and that's basically it. Um, we would have a volunteer coach which was a, a father or a mother. Um, some teams were lucky enough to have a father or a mother that had some experience in soccer. Um, not necessarily being professional, but uh, having some type of passion or some type of background for, for soccer. And uh, from 4 to 14, um, that's, what, uh, that's what I was raised on and, and coached by, were volunteer parents. Um, I was lucky enough to have um, two coaches uh, throughout my, my, my playing days in, in Kitchener from 4 to about 14. I had two coaches that had a soccer background and uh, one of them was tremendously soccer background. Um, that was Mr. Obanza um, and uh, he, he had a huge impact on uh, me becoming uh, better and he, he was a very passionate man. Uh, his background was from Africa um, and uh, I, 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 loved, I loved him a lot. Uh, unfortunately, um, it wasn't a long time with him. I have had a few years. I wish that I had a lot of years with him because I think that it would have made me even a better person and soccer player and would have taken me to a, a further a further place in, in soccer with my education and, and my guidance uh, because, you know, becoming, uh, getting to a high level of soccer, you need a lot of guidance and you need someone to be able to, to mold you to, to be able to reach the highest levels. Um, and I think that's one of the one of the reasons that I didn't play at um, the highest highest level. Uh, I played at the highest level for Canada because once you play for the Canadian national team, you can't go any higher. There is no Canadian national team higher. It's that's what it is. Um, but I'm talking about the guidance, especially, um, and that's and that's what was very important uh, for me in those years with with Mr. Alonza. He was uh, two or three years of tremendous guidance and tremendous passion and, and leadership for, for me, not just me but for the whole team and we had a very good team that year and it was very it was very fun uh, we, we won and we won and came second in a lot of tournaments um, and the leagues we, we, would, we would win some and obviously come second in some but we had a very good team we would always do well I'm very proud to, to, have to say that Mr. Rubanza was my coach then I went on to a team in, in Cambridge uh, where I met a, a coach called Mr. Vicente, a Portuguese background. Um, that was the, the next coach that gave me that passion and, and gave me that guidance and, and gave me the right training and gave me the right mentality and made me such a better player. Uh, by the way, those two coaches um, that I mentioned, Mr. Abanza and Vicente, they were based out of Kitchener and Cambridge and uh, they were looked at in high regard uh, for their soccer background and soccer passion and soccer experience. And if it wasn't for, for those two coaches specifically, um, I, wouldn't be, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't have done what I've done and I wouldn't be in the position I am right now because those were the first coaches that gave me something uh, to work for and, and to strive for and to, to tell me that I was a good soccer player and I did have good qualities you can make it if you give everything and that gave me a lot of confidence to continue forward so uh, those two those two men I am very grateful for. 
after my time in Cambridge, uh, we played a couple games against a team, Mississauga Dixie, and the coach there was called Mr. Nakib, and that was the third coach uh, for my youth development in Canada. Uh, he was another one that gave me the same uh, passion, gave me the same uh, confidence and qualities uh, to, to continue moving forward in the progression, not just playing for fun. Uh, I, I strived for more as these coaches kept on telling me that I had great qualities and I could move forward and I could maybe do something uh, with soccer. So uh, I got a phone call from Mr. Nikib and he, uh, he invited me to go to, to Mississauga Dixie and uh, I jumped at the opportunity because now there was a, a chance for me to play in the GTA and, uh, and play soccer against higher competition and play with, uh, I wouldn't necessarily say a better team, but a better atmosphere that would allow me to expose myself to um, the provincial team and national team coaches because those coaches didn't come down to Kitchener or Cambridge to, to, to see anybody. But uh, I will say this, I played three games for Dixie. I think I had seven goals in three games. And uh, my father got a phone call from the provincial team. And uh, I was invited to go to the provincial team. And, and thankfully, I made it. And I got to participate in a great competition. At, at that time, for me, it was a great competition because I never played anything higher. Um, and then when I made the provincial team, uh, I was surrounded by good players and I got to get a lot more confidence and I was exposed to the great coaches and then before I knew it I was invited to the U17 national team and um, before I before I knew it I was in Trinidad and Tobago and uh, competing for Canada against other countries and before I knew it CONCACAF was over and I was the leading goal scorer of the U17 Canadian national team uh, in CONCACAF and I was very proud of that because in one year, I went from playing uh, rep soccer in, in Dixie to representing Canada and being the leading goal scorer in CONCACAF. So having said that, uh, back to the culture. Um, back then, I was one of the only, if not the only, from my time and my age. I think, I think there was a, a only one, uh, but there was, there was not many players at all from this area doing uh, what I did. Um, and that was, and like I said earlier, that was because I had two coaches um, that motivated me and had some soccer passion and, and were soccer people uh, with soccer backgrounds and not just, you know, oh, I like watching soccer on TV. Uh, these men could also show us. Uh, these men were, were also telling us the right thing. And in the end, our teams were winning. And it wasn't just me. It was the entire team and all of the players uh, that could vouch for these two coaches uh, that helped them and helped the team become so much better. And that leads me to, to, to the other side of that. Um, there, was, there were other coaches and other teams, of course, because Kitchener Minor Soccer and, and Cambridge Youth Soccer and Dixie uh, Mississauga, they had uh, thousands of players, we're talking about thousands. Um, and, and all of those other teams had volunteer coaches, uh, some of them moms, uh, some of them dads. And, um, and that, didn't, uh, that didn't help the players that were like me. Um, when I first started, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, I had I had coaches that were moms and dads and volunteers, and they all have a place. Absolutely, they all have a place um, in house league. I think it's great because house league kids and young kids, young kids are um, are it's it's they're young, so you must have some type of babysitting component. You must have a father or mother figure at, at that age, uh, because a, a total stranger coaching a four or five year old. Um, there's, there, that's a lot of work there, and when you have a parent that is has a kid on the team, um, that can help a lot. Um, but for someone like me, um, it, it would have worked backwards, uh, and it did, because uh, the minute that I got Mr. Abunza, um, everything just went straight up. Uh, it was it was in me. It was something that I craved. It was something that I needed. Something that I wanted. Uh, someone that knew more and could show more and could give me more and so that I could improve because even at a young age, at five years old, um, I wanted to win and I wanted to improve and I wanted to my team to win and I wanted to be the best uh, and that was at five years old. Um, I asked my parents, um, when was it that you saw that I wanted to I wanted to be the next level and I wanted to improve and I wanted to go to the, you know, further 
and they said right away without hesitating I, I was four and a half five years old they already knew that this is what this is what it was to be um, so back to back to the the parent volunteer coaching um, it, it has its place absolutely uh, but once it starts to get into a uh, parent volunteer coaching um, uh, kids that are of a higher level uh, and want more um, you're not doing any justice for, for the players. Uh, that's when a, a new coach of some type of uh, soccer background or, or professional background or strong, strong, strong passion and education in soccer needs to take over. And um, you know, I'm not, and I'm not just talking about rep. Rep the same. Rep has volunteer coaches, and um, that's why rep is sometimes in parents' eyes because I get a lot of phone calls and I got a lot of emails about parents complaining having a volunteer coach at a rep level and I say to them well you know I'm very sorry that that's happening to you and there's nothing really I can do uh, because that's the way the system has been programmed and what I mean by the system is the, the main association here in Canada uh, that's what they've implemented is that house league and rep uh, are the two main programs that are um, advertised and, 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 and that's what you get get volunteer coaches that are only giving you uh, a little bit of guidance um, and they want you to just participate and have fun and I would have to say that you know for the higher level kids and parents that's not uh, exactly what they want and they need uh, something more and having that implemented uh, into the program into the system uh, into the culture which I want to get to and um, you know doesn't really do any justice for later on um, where kids want to make provincial teams and national teams and now professional teams like MLS uh, with Montreal, with Toronto and Vancouver. The implementation of for fun is amazing and that's exactly what football should be. Um, but there has to be the component of separation from for fun and competitive and having just rep is not competitive um, and I think everyone already knows that because in Canada uh, I would have to say thousands and thousands and thousands of academies have opened up and the reason that they've opened up and the main reason that they've opened up was to give something better than rep and everyone has done a great job on opening up academies in this country because the football has improved the coaching has improved the players have improved um, and how, how, how do I know that? I had an academy uh, for eight years, um, no longer having an academy, as in not having any more teams. So I'm going to touch on that after. And that's part of the culture talk. Um, the, the academies opening up ha has done a great justice for soccer in Canada. And I want to applaud all of the people and all of the coaches that are behind opening up academies because uh, you have basically changed the soccer in Canada, and I'm very proud of that. Um, I remember when I was growing up, there was only one uh, channel, uh, TSN, and that was only one day a week, and they would play soccer on TV. And there was no YouTube, and there was no uh, newspapers specifically just for soccer, and uh, that, that is about the culture. So our culture changed. The world's culture changed, but in Canada it changed. Um, now there, there's exposure to YouTube and kids are coming with Ronaldo shoes and jerseys and saying, Kevin, Coach Kevin, um, I just saw this on YouTube, watch this, I watched the highlights. So like, I, I, for me, in my mind, I'm saying, wow, how lucky are these kids nowadays to be able to be exposed to all this because I, I wasn't exposed to any of that. It was and my brothers and I in the basement playing soccer, uh, my father, my grandfather, um, some of my friends, dads that knew soccer, but it wasn't many and it wasn't like we could go training and do professional one-on-one uh, -on -one training and watch YouTube channels and watch games on YouTube or wherever you want to find them, dozen sports, these, these, all of these things weren't available to us back in the day. So the soccer culture has changed, yes. Um, a, a lot but the mentality where everything is still kind of just for fun um, it, it, it's still there and 
when I'm coaching kids and when I'm teaching kids, I can see the difference. There's a lot of passion and a lot of a lot of want from the kids to become good, and and, and then there's the parents that that have no education and uh, about soccer and don't have any experience. Um, the kid, I've seen kids that are so good in front of my eyes, technically, and they understand, they understand everything, and I'm thinking, wow, amazing. Your, your dad or, or your mom or your family must be soccer background, and then I speak to the parents, and they have no idea what soccer is. They don't even, they never played it. They don't know what it is. They don't teach their kid. I've had parents admit that I don't do anything to my kid. He just watches it on YouTube, and that's how he became good. And I'm saying, wow. So. You know, there's there's the exposure um, for the kids in, in Canada culture, but it's only been happening in the past, I would say, uh, five to ten years. Uh, but before that, it was very it was very minimal. The options and the, and, and the, the exposure and, and the advertising on TV and commercials that wasn't existing before. So um, in that aspect, soccer culture in Canada is growing tremendously. And I'm very happy about that. Now let's touch a little bit on Brazil, Portugal, Spain, Italy, and the rest of the world. Uh, basically in the rest of the world and specifically those countries that I just mentioned. Soccer is the life. Soccer is their passion. The grandmother, the father, the mother, the uncle, the kid, the cousins. In Brazil where I played, um, soccer was the only thing. Soccer was the way out of life. Um, they wanted to parents knew about soccer I, I would see moms with their kids juggling better than a lot of people that I know it was unbelievable um, if you just do a little bit of background on, on Brazil I mean the women playing beach soccer uh, kids playing on the street bare feet you know, kicking rocks and I got to experience that firsthand where I, I was there for one year and in my hotel room, there would be a lot of kids outside the neighbors playing on the street. So I would come over and I would, I would ask if I could play because it, I just loved it, you know. I want to see how these kids play. I want to play. And when I stepped onto the street, all the kids were bare feet. And I was wearing some running shoes. And as soon as I got the ball, they said, no, 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 stop, 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 stop. And I'm, why? Take off your shoes. You have to take off your shoes here. We don't play with shoes. You got to take off your shoes. Take off my shoes? I'm 19 years old, by the way. I'm going to hurt my feet. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. You take off your shoes or you can't play. Wow. Did that ever open my eyes? I'm talking about 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 year old kids running as their fastest, sprinting and kicking balls and stubbing their toes without even really complaining about anything which was a great, huge shock to me, I couldn't, but, but a blessing. I saw that and I saw something in them. And so I took off my shoes and I played bare feet the first day. Wow, my feet were murdered. My feet were killed. I, I went back into the hotel after, I didn't really notice because I was so much into the game. And then after I looked at my feet, I had blisters the size, oh my God, the size of like peaches. They were huge and bloody and I couldn't believe it. And I, and I said, I'm never gonna do that again. So I went to training and I talked to some of my friends. I'm like, yo, these kids these kids were playing with bare feet. Like, he goes, Kevin, that's the way it is here. We don't have running shoes. We don't have extra stuff. These kids play on the street. My grandparents did, my, my, my parents did. This is how it is here. And that opened my eyes to the soccer culture of Brazil. You know, I, I, I would see the way they would train also. You know, there was a component of beach soccer real soccer on grass and street soccer and don't forget the fitness component this is at the professional level so I started to open my eyes to all the culture I'd go to the cafe and I would see three different newspapers and all of them with soccer on it and almost like 90% of it was soccer the front cover was soccer Vasco da Gama champions Corinthians against Sao Paulo it was just culture and it was like nothing it was like it was not wasn't new this was what it was you know and I was just so blessed to be in that soccer culture and to experience that because um, that's what led me to be uh, Jenga Soccer or Mr. Jenga and wanting to teach kids because I gained all of this experience, not just on the field, but the soccer culture. You know, I go to a, a cafe here 
and I look at the at the newspaper and all I see is politics. And I look and look and I look and I look and I look and I don't see any soccer on, on, in the newspaper. I see hockey. I'm starting to see a little bit of soccer because of the MLS growing tremendously. But other than that, it's politics and stuff like that. So that, that leads me to what the parents are, are looking at in the newspaper. The Brazilian parents are looking at you know, soccer, 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 soccer through the newspaper. And the Canadian parents are looking at politics, 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 politics. So the soccer culture, why are we 73rd or 74th or 75th, which is way better than it used to be because we were in the 150, 170, and now we're at 73rd uh, in the world, in Canada. And that's a huge, huge jump because of the soccer culture that's changing. The soccer culture in Portugal and Spain and Italy is the same as what I just mentioned in Brazil, uh, in England also. All you see is soccer all the time. Okay, in these countries, there's professional leagues, there's second division leagues, there's third division leagues, there's fourth division leagues, there's amateur leagues that are tremendously competitive, there's youth leagues, there's, you, you walk down the street in, in, in London, England, and you oh, all of a sudden you pop up, there's Emirates Stadium, and then there's Chelsea Stadium, and then there's Manchester United Stadium, and there's West Ham Stadium all over the country. You go to Portugal, you go in Lisbon, there's Sporting Lisbon Stadium, Alvalade, then you go down 10 more minutes down the highway, you have Benfica Stadium, you start the Luz, and then you go to Porto, there's Dra Dragão, there's Braga Stadium, there's Boa Vista Stadium. In Spain, the same thing. In Madrid, you have two huge, huge teams fighting against each other, Atletico Madrid and, 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 and Real Madrid fighting in the same city. You go down to Catalonia, and you have Barcelona, Espanol, Girona, you know, it's just the culture, the culture, the newspapers, the people, the beach, everyone's playing soccer all the time, all the time. You know, and and that's basically what uh, what makes Spain and, and Portugal and Italy the same thing. Brazil, uh, Belgium, France, all on the top because the culture is soccer. In the past 10 years, I've been doing Jenga soccer and I've been trying to change the culture. Um, but I've had a lot of a lot of struggles. And when I mean a lot of struggles, I mean a lot of struggles, a lot of struggles that I couldn't believe because you know, I'm here to try and better soccer only. I'm not trying to be here to do anything, anything more. I'm trying to better the soccer, help the kids, help the coaches, help the clubs, help the parents. And um, I've, I've, I've taken a lot of uh, negativity uh, just because I want to help the, the country become more competitive. And I'm not tell, tell, saying everybody, you know, I've had a lot of success, um, but I'm talking about the, the full picture uh, in general. I've had a lot of negativity and it was back to the culture. So the people that don't understand and I want to push your kid to be better because that's how it is in Brazil and Portugal. But that's how it is. Um, even at TFC, they push a lot. I've taken players and I have players in TFC now and they say to me, Kevin, they push, they push, they push. Okay, perfect. So I, I know that I'm doing the same as TFC. I know that I'm doing the same as Benfica and Sporting <clears throat> because and, and in Spain and Catalonia where I've worked. Um, with many camps, I, that's how they push. So I'm doing the same as them. But now I'm in the culture of politics. Now I'm in the culture of um, how, how how kids should be treated in a certain way. And you know, sometimes there's a conflict there because I want to push your kid to be the best because I see that there's a lot a lot of potential and there's something in him. But the parent that doesn't have the education, the parent that doesn't have the experience or background or culture, will think that I am uh, doing. Uh, say uh, something bad, something negative, pushing too hard, um, I want you to work harder, and that's not what those people are used to. When I say those people, I'm talking about the culture and education, I'm not specifically talking about anybody, I'm talking about the culture and education of what they know. The flip side to that, in hockey, I played hockey when I was young. I know friends of mine that have played AAA, friends of mine that have played for the Rangers, Kitchener Rangers in the OHL. I have some friends that have played in the NHL. And they tell me, Kevin, when the kids are very young, it is like go, 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 push, push, push because they want the best. And they've admitted to me because some of them have played soccer, have their kids in soccer in Canada. <clears> That's not like that in the soccer system. I said, well, what do you see? They said that they see that soccer is portrayed as just for fun. 
So what's the difference? Canadian national team soccer, Canadian national team hockey, aren't we trying to, isn't that the top, isn't that the best? It's, shouldn't it be the same mentality? It should be the same. It should be the same. But it's not. So, <clears throat> I know that I'm doing the right thing. I know that I'm on the right path. I will never give up my way. I will always continue to do this. And no one can stop me because I know what I'm doing. And I know the path to get to the top. Because I've been there and many of my friends, my friends, close friends have been there. Um, that motivates me a lot. So I just want to say thank you for listening to uh, this episode of Soccer Culture. Um, I just want to say that you know this was not to offend anybody. Uh, some people may take offense to some of the, the, the phrases and some of the words that I was saying. But again, I'm only here to, to help the country in soccer and uh, expose people to real uh, real soccer, and I'm talking about real soccer from Brazil, from Portugal, from Spain, from England, where I expose my young players now to. Uh, I've spent, sent players to Brazil already, some of them, Joel Twynham. I've sent a bunch of different players to Portugal and Spain. And I'm working in England all the time. I'm talking with professionals, uh, as you will see in the testimonials part three, which is coming out later. And I'm continuously going to be working with top, top professionals in top, top leagues, and some of them even legends of the game, where you will see uh, that some of them are will, will be coming to Canada, and I will be working with them here in Canada, trying to help the soccer culture and the soccer nation become uh, to the top. I want, so I want Canada soccer to get to the top. I want to see Canada soccer, not just because of me, but some of my influence. I want to see Canada soccer in the top 10. I think it's a realistic um, idea. I think it's a realistic goal. I think that we have all of the tools uh, and players and coaching and exposure to get there. Uh, we're improving a lot. And uh, if, if I can help U-17 Canadian national team or U-20 national team win the World Cup at the youth level, I think it's realistic. I've been all over the world. I've seen players of all ages. I've basically, you know, I've done an event with Benfica first team where I got to uh, play and train against Jean Felix, who you all know is the golden boy, plays for Atletico Madrid. I got to shake his hand, I got to hug him, I got to play soccer against him, I got to pass the ball, I got to do free kicks, I got to have a great conversation with him, him and Jota also, and, and, and Pizzi and Jonas, and these unbelievable players that play for Benfica, and they're still much younger. I forget how old I am, which is kind of sad, but these guys are 18, 19 at the top of the world right now. So if I'm dealing with those type of guys and those type of players and in contact with them, I mean, I know that I'm on the right track and I know that I'm getting the right information. So um, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Um, please subscribe to my YouTube channel because there's going to be a lot more uh, information being told, not just um, on soccer culture. There's going to be training, there's going to be tricks, there's going to be a lot of friends that are going to be speaking on my channel. And uh, I'm also going to be taking my channel to Portugal and Spain when I go there this summer. Uh, the Challenge Cup tournaments, players speaking, uh, my own players, other players, you know. And that's and that's basically what I want to do. That's me trying to help the culture change and the soccer culture become better. Uh, we can compete with a lot of soccer cultures like Brazil, Portugal, Spain, and Italy. Why not? Why not? Of course we can. I'm, I'm very I'm very positive about it. I'm very confident about it. I want soccer in Canada to be the best. That's my goal because that's real talk. 